hello and welcome everybody. I'm very excited to be able to talk with you today and thank you so much uh, for the invitation to be part of, Mah of the first Maharahui Belgium and Netherlands. It is fantastic that you're gathering and talk about portfolios, share what you're doing in Mahara, um, what ideas you have and what you might want to be able to do. And um, Joost, thank you also very much for your wonderful introduction of Mahara. So I just cut out a couple of my slides, which is perfect, because then we can focus more on Mahara 2004, which is the version that we will be releasing next week. I will try to keep the eye a little bit on the chat, uh, but please do feel free to um, use audio to interrupt me. And if you want to follow the slides um, outside of the clue button, then you're welcome to do that. I just put the link into the chat. And off we go. Um, as Joost has said, uh, Mahara was founded in New Zealand and it has actually been in existence since September 2006. So we are going to celebrate our 15th anniversary this year in September and are really excited that the community is embracing the software and has been looking into developing it over the years. I myself started my journey with portfolios, looking into portfolios um, after university when I had um, a job at the um, Ludwig Maximilians Universität in Munich in Germany, where I was part of a, um, a very wide um, EU project that looked into improving the employability skills of students by improving the uh, language skills. Um, and there I got in, in contact with the first um, learning and teaching portfolios, which was really fascinating. But we hadn't actually incorporated that into our uh, training programs. And it wasn't until I moved to Luxembourg to work at the University of Luxembourg, where we started using portfolios um, more in a more integrated way. And um, that was in the Bachelor en Sciences de l'Education, um, where every student needed to keep a portfolio. And in 2008, um, we came across Mahara, back then version 1.2 on the cusp of version 1. Point, yeah, cusp of version 1.2. Uh, we started out with 1.1, I believe, and um, went away from just sharing files. Um, so that students did not have to upload files to a network drive, but could create their portfolio in very simple ways without using drag and drop. And then mid-2010, I moved to New Zealand, um, to Wellington, Te Whanganui Atara, and have been working with Catalyst since. Um, in the Mahara team, um, together with the developers and our designer and the rest of the team, um, working on the improvement of Mahara, working with our clients, and then also supporting the community as project lead and also performing community facilitation roles. So today, I wanted to focus on what is coming up in Mahara and you, you hear us talk about, especially if you have been in the community for a little while already, that we talk about 2010, 2004, Jos just mentioned a couple of those versions. And so I just wanted to tell you a little bit what these numbers stand for. Some of you might already have um, noticed uh, that it is actually related to the year and the month in which Mahara is being released. So we've got 21.04 coming up. And that means that version of Mahara is being or was released in 2021 and in April. Altogether, we have two releases per year, one in April and one in October, and you can usually expect them in the second half of the month. 
we also always have a preview version before we release my, um, the 0.0 version of one of our major releases. And um, that will come either tomorrow or latest on Tuesday next week. It is going to be a relatively short time frame for the preview version this year um, because we just finished a very large um, project implementing a number of new features in Mahara. So a lot of the work that is oftentimes more public has just taken place behind closed doors until we can put everything into Mahara core. So you will see a lot of new features coming up. And every version of Mahara is valid for 18 months. So a year and a half. For that time frame, we will provide security updates as needed. And in contrast to Moodle, which I believe a lot of you are using, we are not on a, a fixed minor point update release schedule, but um, are doing that uh, more on demand. And so what does actually go into Mahara, into each version? Well, we have five big components that go in, and one is usability improvements, then new features, um, uh, technical updates that just need to be made in order to keep the code base um, at, at a contemporary level, bug fixes, um, because while we try to not put many bugs in there, sometimes they do come up. And last but not least, something that you don't really see a lot um, is community infrastructure updates. Now, in this release, you can expect a lot of things which are not quite yet on the wiki page, um, so we will be updating that shortly. But on that page, you can then also go back to previous releases. And when we do, do know more of what we can already publicly talk about, we, of course, will put that onto the roadmap. And I'll give you a very brief overview of the usability improvements and feature developments for Mahara 2104. And before we take a quick look at the remaining three, I'll actually take you into a Mahara instance in order to show you directly what some of those things look like. Okay, um, usability improvements. Um, it, it was quite timely that some of you asked the questions about templates and um, students being able to create um, their own look and feel. And for me, templates are often an invitation. They are not something that should be rigorously used, but it is something that gives the students um, an idea of what is expected. And then they could or should oftentimes still have the possibility to rearrange things, to add or remove certain items. And so in this release of Mahara uh, 2104, we've spent quite a bit of time um, working on features that support organizations such as universities or companies or um, accreditation institutions to have easier workflows to make things more streamlined, um, to automate also a number of things. Those, they have a bunch of possibilities there um, and also reduce some of the clicks. And so that of course also means working with templates, creating templates more easily, distributing templates more easily, um, having fewer clicks within a particular workflow, um, have more possibilities also for uh, making customization. So some of the things that are going into Mahara 2104 will still need to be changed um, on the code side, but at least the initial code, the possibilities are already there. Um, and then we are also always working on improving accessibility in order to make sure that um, everybody can use the platform, no matter whether they can use the mouse or are dependent on the keyboard or also need to zoom in, for example. Very closely related uh, to these usability improvements are the features, new features that often come through usability improvements or that influence usability. And so for that, um, we have um, a couple of new things that relate to the, um, to the use of portfolios in more of an assessment context 
or evaluation, um, accreditation, registration context. And so that is the portfolio review. Um, then we have a feature in Mahara that allows you to, as group administrator, allows you to see a report of all the submissions and also be able to download them. So that goes kind of into what um, I believe it was Richard had said, that institutions often need to keep the portfolios and what students have submitted and worked on. And so the group submissions allow you to do that automatically. And in the past, you always needed to go to an administrator to, to get access to one of those archives. But now if that is done in a group, um, group administrators will be able to do that themselves. The University of Bremen in Germany also contributed a huge feature, uh, which we are finally able to get into Mahara. And that is the submission management, um, where you can just really assign graders, assign evaluators um, to portfolios, which helps in particular when you have large classes and lots of students submitting portfolios. And we've also already briefly touched on the Moodle assignment plugin. Um, that is not yet quite in the Moodle plugins directory, but um, we will be able to put it there soon. Uh, one of our developers is putting the final touches on it so that um, the archiving will also work. And so now let's actually take a quick look at what some of those things look like in a Mahara platform. Um, I'll show you the submissions first because I've got them right here on screen. So if you're the group administrator in a regular Mahara group, well, a group that has been set up by a staff member or institution member because it does need to allow submissions. Um, then as group administrator, you will see the new group item submissions and have a very large report available where you see all the portfolios that have been submitted to this group. So you see the name of the person, the portfolio, when it was submitted, whether it was related, uh, whether a task was related to it. So it is ex uh, it's tied closely into the group plans, also a feature by the, the Universität Bremen. Um, you can see who the assessor is. Then if feedback has rating, it will be displayed. Um, when you click the um, chevron next to the name, any feedback that has been given on the first page of the portfolio, the last feedback by the assessor will also be shown. And you can do the releasing directly from the screen instead of from every single portfolio individually. Very nice also that you can um, have full text search available. So if you are just looking for anything task related, then you can see that. Or if you're looking for just um, anything that's not good things, um, Josh. So if you just want to see what SSR Josh can see, then um, that is available. There are also filters that make it easy to filter for certain columns. Um, so that you can even narrow down that list more and more. And you can also export that table either as PDF or a CSV file in order to process it further, either for statistical analysis or just to have everything downloaded and um, available in a spreadsheet. Now that is the view that is in the group submissions. Um, it is also possible for a regular student to see that table when they go to the main menu share and then submissions because then um, any submissions that they have made are displayed and for a um, for for an assessor for a, they can also see all the items that they have been assigned. And in this case, I'm logged in as the site administrator, who is also the group administrator. And so because I do have access to all the portfolios, even though other assessors are assigned, um, I see all of those that are available in my two groups. 
So it's a very rich screen with lots of possibilities to narrow things down so that you can, um, as a single assessor, only see your own items and not be overwhelmed and also have the visual cues in regards to the result and the status and seeing whether something has already been released but needs to be um, or failed or needs to be redone or whether it had actually been done correctly and everything is finished. Um, now let's take a look at the other things that I talked about, um, namely in particular for the templates and the portfolio review. So what has already been possible um, for at least a couple of versions of Mahara is that you can uh, set a page to be a template that is under the advanced options. And when you do that, any instructions that you set here on the page level or that you give on a text block will not be able to be edited by a student. Um, so let's just put that in here and save that and then also add a text block. And currently instructions only exist on text blocks. Um, and there you can see instructions here. And then students can write their block content. So that is nothing new in Mahara. What is new though instead is that when you have a collection, and here in this case, we'd have kind of eight pages. And if you have wanted every single page within that portfolio to be a template, currently, before you upgrade to 2104, you'd have to go through that step and set everything to be a template. And that can be quite tedious. So what we have done is to make that easier. And that is one of those workflow improvements. Namely, now you have the possibility to set the entire collection as a template. And it is also possible to set the, um, this template as the current autocopy template so that when anybody joins that institution new, they will receive it automatically. By setting the template here, what happens is that every single page within this portfolio is automatically set to be a template and that cannot be changed. And this switch of prevent removing of blocks is also set to yes. And that simply means that um, you do not see the delete icon when it is a student portfolio. Here I'm on the institution level, that's why we still see it. So we'll log in as a student shortly and give that portfolio to them. And so it is that template switch is a convenience um, to make sure that it is very easy to set all the templates. And of course, if you remove that and say no to the template, then um, every single page can be set individually as template. Okay, so the other possibility now is that autocopy template. And the, in, uh, pra for practical purposes, that had already been possible as well, because when you go to the sharing options, you can set um, a, um, a portfolio to be automatically copied to all new members of the institution. And so what that switch does on the collection is that it automatically sets these two switches to yes and also makes it available to the institution career services. And since I had already shared that portfolio with registered people, it is also still there. So now I'll just also share the internship reflection, 
with and make sure that I can copy that copy for new institution members and then I can log in as somebody from career services And so as you can see, when I masquerade, I don't have to um, set a password or go into the GDPR settings, but I can simply log in. Okay, now that I'm log in, logged in, I can see my internship reflection and can, that has be, had been shared by the institution and can then copy it. Copy it. And now I don't have an, an editor field here for the instructions. And also when I go to the assignment, I cannot change the instructions here. So that is existing functionality, only we made it much, much easier to deal with it. So that is one part for the templates. And the other thing which is that new block that uh, we created um, for the um, for the portfolio completion is that when you work with portfolio completion, also a feature that had been in Mahada for, for a couple of versions now, is that you can, on the institution level, um, that you can edit that page now and you can put a portfolio review block onto it. And so that portfolio review block is very versatile. And so it can be used for statements that are ready made, um, that just require a tick. Um, or it can also be used to add comments. Um, you can display the name of the reviewer or you can prevent displaying the name of the reviewer so that the review is done anonymously. And you can also restrict it to certain roles within Mahara when they have access to that portfolio. So that's why we also have the new role of reviewer to more easily assign that. And so if you give people access to your portfolio, but only one person has the review role, then only they will be able to um, complete that statement and uh, prove it. You can also say from when it is possible to make that review and whether the portfolio shall be locked immediately um, upon making the review so that um, the student cannot change anything after anymore that is not a submission directly into the group so that can be done separately the, in this case it really just locks the portfolio from editing and also a notification can be sent to the portfolio author um, with the information that a statement has been made and that it is available now for looking at it and so that can then be put onto a template page and immediately copied into the portfolio. And if it is part of a template, then the portfolio author won't see it until the statement has been ticked. Now one uh, couple more nice features um, are that, nope, I need to go into my actual portfolio, pages and collections. Um, one nice feature is that you can now also immediately give access to somebody from a portfolio page. But as you can see, you don't see that on the screen because that feature hasn't yet been merged into Mahada Core. But that is also one of those things to, to reduce the number of clicks that um, you can go to the More Options button and immediately give access to a portfolio. Um, and also when you have been given access to a portfolio by a single person, 
then you can remove your access from that portfolio because sometimes you might your students might not revoke access to their portfolio for you when they have shared it and that way you can do a bit of house cleaning yourself um, and but that of course only works when they have shared it with you directly rather than shared it with um, everybody in um, on the platform for example so that is a good number of the features that we have put into Mahara 2104. There are still a few others um, that we will be talking about in our feature release video um, when we have um, confirmed all the features that we are going to put in. And as I said, um, that should be or the finalizing should be done either tomorrow or after our long weekend on Tuesday. And then the release will be on Friday next week. The Moodle assignment submission plugin um, is also something that I think I can show you very quickly, but um, I'll have to see. I think I have to log in again. Um, is that, let's see if that works. Nope, requires me to log in. Um, just give me a second, please. Uh -huh. And that looks very much like the one you're already used to from Moodle via Mnet, if you have ever used that, that you can set up a normal assignment in Moodle and then a student, like you would upload a document, can click on edit submissions and instead of seeing the file manager, you can see all the portfolios that are on your portfolio in your own personal portfolio area and then select one that your instructor shall see. So that is uh, based on LTI for authentication and on web services to make that entire screen available and then the submitting and also the locking and the archiving. And that way it um, enables you to go away from using Mnet and really moving on to LTI. Now, technical updates also always need to happen. And in this version of Mahara, um, we are expanding our capabilities around Docker. So make it much, much easier to set up Mahara using Docker for development purposes or for review purposes. Um, again, we have a lot of library upgrades to do so that all the third party components that we use on Mahara work. And our designer has also made a number of CSS changes again for consistency and um, for ease, ease of use of the um, themes and to make it easier for front-end people to do their work. Every version of Mahada also has bug fixes. Um, they are priority, prioritized by our team and can sometimes be really, really tiny projects from a five minute language strength fix to quite large projects um, when there is a gnarly problem to resolve. And um, the community can help with that. So if you want to have certain bugs or also features prioritized, then we can definitely provide an estimate or you can work if um, OpenEDU is your provider, you can work with them and um, they can also fix things and contribute them back to Mahara Core. Community infrastructure wise, um, there are two things that um, are in the works that haven't quite uh, finished yet. And um, those are that we do eventually want to move away from Launchpad as our bug tracker to GitLab because that has a more modern interface and would also integrate better when, once, uh, when we decide or if we decide to move away from our current code review system. And um, the other item that we are going to do this year still is also having more inclusive terminology in Git and going away from some of the terms that we are using at the moment. And those were 
kind of the, the technical Mahara things, improvements to the software. And as you will have seen, a lot of them are geared towards organizations working with portfolios and not so much individual portfolios or new portfolio features for students, but more organizational portfolio features. It is also completely possible to um, use web services to move content from Moodle to Mahara or from Mahara to Moodle. All of those possibilities are there in the background um, that can, in some cases, just be configured. In other cases, can be done via um, development work. But besides all of those technical updates and working with the software, um, we are also looking into the the wider um, context of portfolios and what is going on in the wider ePortfolio community. And um, there I'm involved in a project by ABLE, the Association of Authentic, Experiential and Experience-Based Learning, um, a US-based um, organization that looks into the advancement of portfolios but they also operate internationally. And for the second year now, there's been a digital ethics task force that is looking into um, producing uh, principles to support the uh, creation of portfolios that respect um, privacy, security, data privacy, um, and also look into topics such as diversity, inclusion, equity, belonging, decolonization, and how portfolio creators can be supported to adhere to digital ethics principles and also um, provide resources for instructors to do so. So the, the first year principles are already published, as you can see from the URL on the screen, or you can click it if you opened the presentation on its own. And um, there you find the first 10 principles. Right now we are working on three more, which are diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and decolonization, visibility of labor, not just for instructors, but also for students, and kind of knowing how much work actually goes into creating a portfolio, and also evaluation. And those will be made available later in the year and be added to the existing 10 principles. But now I'd also like to know a little bit about you because it is getting quite late down here in New Zealand. Um, so that unfortunately, I won't be able to participate in the remaining sessions. I can still participate in the one o'clock one. So I look forward to that one. But the other ones I will certainly catch on the recording. But um, do please feel free because there are certainly more people in the chat um, than are going to present uh, to go to this URL. And hold on, I'll also paste it into the chat. Um, go to this URL and put in how you're using Mahara, whether you're using it with individual students, with your entire um, university or college, um, anything where you think you might do it differently than what you have seen others do, but also share if you're using the portfolio, kind of using the inbuilt features of Mahara, um, or also whether you're at the start of your journey or in the middle or advanced. We, we'd love to hear from you and learn how you're using portfolios and how you're making best use of Mahara. And uh, Richard, no, you shouldn't need an account for Padlet. There should just be a plus um, icon at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. If that were not the case, then I'll check that out over the lunch break um, and activate that. And yes, thank you for letting me know. I'm sorry that I didn't check that before. Um, there are a couple more links that I want to share. Um, one is a short video introduction video to just need to get my browser to work. Um, short introduction video on I need to do that later um, on the digital ethics principles and um, just a short explanation. And then also um, later in the year at, in the third week of July 
ABLE is holding its annual meeting and um, that is a conference where practitioners will come together and talk about e-portfolios and this year there is quite a lot of participation anticipated so lots of workshops and hackathons and not just presentations so that everybody is very welcome to come along and um, share ideas um, talk with other practitioners around the world in order to see what is current in e the e-portfolio practice um, and maybe also introduce new concepts um, to those in the English speaking world who of course make up most of the participants. So thank you very much um, for today and I wish you all the best for the afternoon session sharing and learning from each other. And um, if we still have a few minutes for questions, then I'm happy to take them. Um, or otherwise, you are also welcome to contact me through the community. Um, on mahara.org, we do provide free support on a best effort basis. And um, if you also have questions, you can send them through via email and then we'll see how we can assist you. <laughs>